I'm, I'm just also thinking that in a way this is all partially a result of that for large portions of course a big part of our music education these days is a purely reproductive mm. culture and um th th there comes a point where like you you've, you've out interpreted things mm. uh and in a way um yeah that's why i think again to come back to the idea of uh improvisation and what it could mean is that that it it opens us up to a, a new way of actually you know just communicating the music and focusing on that rather than on the perfect reproduction i think yeah that's that's one thing i still want to say i told you in the beginning that my first music lesson um my teacher uh, back then uh, gave me a sheet of paper and on it there were the note values and he said basically well that's a full note, that's a whole note that's a half note that's a quarter and so on learn that until next week and then we start playing pieces yeah. and very first lesson that's that's what happened and uh, very early on I realized that I I, um, I I learned to play pretty well to play without mistakes because one thing that was there from the very beginning is that if you don't play what's written there, it's wrong. It's a mistake. It's a mistake. And uh, I were, as a child, less so now, but as a child, I was very much a child that wanted to uh, please. Uh, I wanted to, you know, people to like me. And, you know, in a way, every child wants it. But I didn't want to stick out by doing a mistake. So uh, I, I learned to play everything very neat and even with feet and uh, no mistakes. And that was all very good. When I then had to start improvising when I played in church, I just it was utter panic. It was like, like what to do? Everything I do is, oh my God, that's a mistake. It's not written anywhere. Yeah. And to overcome that fear mm. took so many years. And um, so I, I, I think that there's so many levels on which this is in a way a problematic culture for us as musicians and also with regards to like not every child that gets music lessons turns into a professional musician at some point but what you want is that people take something from it and that they love music they care about music and they understand something about it when 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 they learn about it even if they later on don't play so much or you know they just they just turn into music lovers but you don't want to turn them into um yeah fear ridden <laughs> beasts that uh, like uh, jump when they when they're confronted with uh, something that is actually a benign task in a way yeah my goal is as, as a um, in education is to turn everyone into a musician and then i'm not uh, saying that everyone should play a music instrument because that's not how i define a musician but i see music as a um, biological feature of of human beings uh, I, I don't know if you know uh, Henk Jan Honing's book. Uh, yeah. uh, Iedereen is uh, is musical. Oh, everyone well, is musical. Yeah, I, I know the uh, title. Yeah, uh, he's a cognitive neuroscientist in Amsterdam. Uh, the the idea that language and music are universal is an important aspect of of neuroscience. Mm -hmm. And um, we're not really doing anything with that in in our culture. We don't. We we see music as as something you can learn. But of course, we don't say that about language. Language is not something you can learn if you want. No, language is, everyone speaks a language. And everyone uh, is actually a musician. We sing. And um, so uh, the um, incorporation of singing and rhythm and dance into normal life should be a, a, a goal in, uh, in education, but also in, in the, raising children. The idea of music as a language as a universal language now i'm i'm thinking with languages you have many 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 different languages and yeah. then those are subdivided into dialects yeah. um how would it apply to music i mean without actually you know any uh, any sort of prejudice about sort of what the background is but uh, languages are also shaped by um cultural backgrounds by um, geographical backgrounds possibly that yeah, okay. uh, all these things um for music language uh is there um a way to say that like um 
for some people, certain music languages are their mother tongue yeah. rather than others. Yeah, yeah. I mean, we, we don't really realize that until you meet somebody from, from Syria or who, who sings in a different intonation. Right. Mm -hmm. uh, but we uh, sing a, a scale that we have learned as, as infants, yeah. actually, very, very quickly. And um, uh, we uh, actually, there's a big relationship between the language we speak and the music we make. There's mm -hmm. an interesting study done by Anirudh Patel, uh, a rather well-known neuroscientist, uh, in which he compared European languages to European music. Oh, that's and, interesting. And uh, he uh, uh, found a very clear relationship between the music made in a certain country with, uh, and I'm talking about um, art music uh, mm -hmm. composers, yeah. and uh, and the language they spoke. Uh, there was one exception which I thought was very, very curious. That was uh, 18th century Germany. Uh, uh -huh. It was Italian. The music was Italian. And, and that in the, in the course of the 18th century, it changed from Italian to German. Yeah, it's, 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 so it's, I it's recommend that. Uh, yeah, that's very interesting. Yeah, it's very interesting. I think, and and um, from a musicological point of view, uh, very defendable that that would take place. But that's something that yeah, he, yeah. he found just by analysis yeah. of, of language and, yeah. and music. Yeah, um, just going back to what I just forgot, um, uh, we um, we don't teach uh, children to improvise in language either. I mean, we improvise in daily life. Mm -hmm. But we never teach children to uh, uh, to do oratory anymore. Mm. Um, I think that uh, that's a missed uh, chance to to teach um, children how to uh, just get up in front of the class and improvise a short. Uh, speech, right. and when they get to the university to actually participate in debates and to do oratory and uh, that sort of thing, which was very, very popular mm -hmm. uh, in the past, yep. but has kind of died out, which means that um, that we don't confront children even with this um, aspect of their development in, in, in their own language. Yeah, uh, not It's not only a musical problem, it's also a, a language problem, I mm. think. Yeah.